Hi there guys, we're gonna create a zombie in Photopea today. The first thing that you're gonna need is a portrait. I'd like you to use uh, one of the self portraits that we did earlier. So I'm gonna go file open. Next thing you do, scroll down. I'm gonna use this shot. I'm gonna crop this out first. I'm gonna hit C for crop. You can also come over here to the left tool console and you select the L7 key, which is right there. I'm just gonna crop it down a little bit. Here we go, hit enter. Next thing I'm gonna need is a skull, so you can go to Google Image and find that. But I'm just gonna go File Open. And I've got a skull that I already downloaded earlier. Okay, so we double click. Next, I'm gonna do Control A for all, Control C is copy, and then I'm gonna to go to the tab with my portrait. I'm gonna hit Control V. Now, it's important when you're choosing the skull uh, to pick one that's oriented in the direction that the portrait is. So if you're, you know, if you've got a, let's say a por profile portrait, where you're looking sideways, uh, you'll want to find a skull that's looking sideways. This one, obviously, as I was looking up, this is going to work for the portrait that I have. Next thing I'm going to do is free transform. So you can do control alt T, or you can just go edit free transform. I'm going to resize this. I'm going to try to ballpark, get it about the same size as my face. Then I hit uh, enter to lock that down. I need to change the opacity so I can then further refine it. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So I hit Control plus plus. Let me see why that's not working. There we go. Control plus plus. And uh, at this point too, I'm going to remove this white background. If you've got a background, you can use either the lasso or you could use the wand or whatever it's going to take to get rid of that. I'm going to tap W for wand. Remember that'll you'll hit W three times. It'll go to wand or you could just choose it over here on the left tool console. I'm going to hit Control X. And as you can see, I made it just a little too small. Next thing I'm gonna do is I wanna deselect all of these, this selected area, so I hit Control D, and I'm gonna then hit Free Transform again, so it's Control Alt T, or Edit Free Transform, and I will then resize it just so that it goes from chin to the top of my head, and it fits there over the eye sockets, and I hit Enter. And so the next thing, I'll bring the opacity up, so I'm over here in the left in the Layers palette, I'll bring that up to 100%. Uh, there's a little bit of white here in the mouth and the teeth that I want to get rid of. So let me zoom in a little bit on that. And I'll just use that magic wand. Control X, Control X, and then I'll go uh, Control Zero. That's going to go fit this screen. Now, the way this works is I'm going to shift this layer underneath my portrait. So I'm going to grab, click, and drag it underneath. Now background is on top. I can't see the skull. It's still here. Actually, why don't I label these right now? A skull. This one's going to be called selfie. So, and now we're going to be using uh, something called layer mask. And the way layer mask works is, is that it does not mess with the layer that's right here, the selfie layer. But what it will do is it will cut away parts a way that will make it possible for you not to lose the whole image. So let me show you how that works. By the way, the layer mask is down here in the layers palette. It kind of looks like a camera. It's a rectangle with a circle in the middle. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my paintbrush. So you can tap B for brush and you can change the diameter of that. I'm going to change the size here, make it a little bit larger and then sample it out on the picture to see what diameter I've got. I'm also going to change the hardness. So by default, it's at 100%. I'm going to go down to zero. And then over here, I've got what are called the brush thumbnails. And this can give you the character of show you the character of the brush. I'm going to go with this kind of aerosol effect. And I'll bring this one yeah, up like that, maybe a little less. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the layer mask is selected. So over here on the selfie layer, you'll see that there are two thumbnails. I want to make sure I'm over on the right side, okay, where this white square is. And then I'm gonna go through, and as I go through, I'm gonna expose some of that skull. All right. And, uh, you know, actually I'm gonna go back through and I'm not going to erase so much of the eyeball there. Uh, I want the eyeball to be kind of poking out through the through the eye socket there. So I'm gonna hit Control Z. Show you what, I'm gonna zoom in and zoom in on this a little bit. So I'm going to go control plus plus and then make sure I'm on layer mask. And then I'm going to begin kind of carving away at this 
image. And as you can see, this checkerboard starts to appear. The way that you can fix that is by going over to the layers palette and beside the layers palette, beside the garbage can here, you'll see new layer. So I select that. I'm going to fill this black. And what that will do is it will create sort of like a base background. So I'm going to shift the order. Let me just label this base background. And then I'm going to grab my paint bucket. Okay, so it's underneath the gradient tool or you can tap G, the G key twice. And then I'm going to put the black and you'll see that it fills in that checkerboard area. I'm going to go back to my layer mask. I'm going to tap B for brush again. And I'm going to kind of work to clean that up. There we go. And that's doing just fine. Next thing I want to do is I want to add a little bit more shadow to kind of cause the the eye socket here to sink a bit. So beside the garbage can, I'm going to hit new layer. I'm going to go over to my brush. So I tap B for brush and uh, right there. By the way, if it shows the pencil here, you're just going to do a right click and then hit go to the brush tool. Next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the opacity. So up at the top right now, the opacity is like at 22. Let's see what, yeah, that's nice. That's going to definitely cause that to sink in, sink back a little bit. I might also use that brush around the side edges here. Uh, I think I'm going to remove the ear. So at this point in time, if you want to look over here at the layers palette, right now I'm selecting the layer mask. I want to select the portrait. And so I'm going to select that. And then I can use that brush and sort of get rid of the ear. You can use the uh, spot healing brush as well to do the same exact thing. And then I'm going to go through and uh, maybe just add a little bit of dark shadow here, maybe where the cheekbones come in, so on and so forth. And uh, you can come in and at this point you can add in, you know, the lizard eyes or whatever else you want to do to kind of make it a little spookier. I'm going to change the background out real quick. I'm going to go with something that's a little bit more Halloween. So I'm going to go control O. I downloaded this earlier. Uh, it's just sort of this basic, you know, Halloween forest scene. Looks like that. I'm going to go control A for all, control C for copy. And then I'm going to go back to the tab where the portrait is. Uh, I'm going to select the base layer because I want this new layer to be on top of that. And I'm going to hit control V. Now you can't see it because it's buried under the self portrait. What I'm going to do is I'll move it up to the top of the stack just so I can see it. And as you can see, it's a little bit too small. So I need to do a, re a resize on it. I'm going to hit control alt T. I'm going to then zoom out and I'm going to stretch this so that it fills up the space. There we go. We got the moon there. And then I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to then move this to the background. Okay. Now you can't see it and you're wondering like, where did it go? Well, what I'll do next is I'm going to go back to my layer mask. So I go to the selfie layer. I'm going to again, grab the brush tool. And right now the brush is too small. So I'm going to enlarge that. I'm going to change the hardness down to zero. And then I'm going to begin to remove it. But as you'll see, it carves too deeply into the background. I want it to be a little bit softer. So I'll need to change the opacity. So uh, I'll hit Control Z to get out of that. I'm going to change this opacity up here at the top. Let's go with something, you know, 10, 15%, something like that. Okay. And I'm um, just going to then sort of excavate the background so that that forest scene starts to poke through. There we go. And I might even just up the, you can go over this multiple times to expose more and more of the piece. Uh, you know, it's just nice subtle background. It's fine. I don't need to overdo it. There we go. And then uh, at this point, I might change the shirt, maybe make that a little, make it black. I might go over to the portrait. So again, over in the layers palette, I'm going to select my portrait. I might change 
I might change the tone of the skin right now. It's really super saturated or intense uh, because of the webcam. The webcam sort of overcompensates. So I'm going to hit Control U. You can also access this by going Edit, uh, sorry, Image, Adjustments, uh, Hue and Saturation. It'll pull up the exact same window. And I can then reduce the saturation on this. Maybe uh, play around with, you know, lightness and darkness. Yeah, something that whatever you feel is going to work with the skull there. I hit OK. And then I'm going to just simply save this as a JPEG. So I go under File, Export, Export as JPEG, and then you post it. And that's pretty much it. In this lesson, what we learned about was layer mask. And we're just basically playing with that and uh, doing an experiment. So here it is. This is the zombie project. I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.